All right, so nice job getting the diffuse Lambertian shading done. Um, and this, this looks quite nice. This is all we need to get a basic renderer. And as I said, it's physically realistic. This is the way that seasons work, for example. Uh, but it is a little bit bland in some ways. If you're going to insist that it, you know, it absorbs the light and reflects it equally in all directions, then there are certain effects that you can't do. So for example, you know, I could actually, maybe I want to make these shiny. So look, see how Homer here is, is shiny? And how this dinosaur has some blue light that shines off of it. So it shines back blue. And then this, this ellipsoid here is, is reflecting the light as well. So you might want to have part of it be diffuse, but then see part of it actually come through um, as a shine. Okay, so that can spice things up a little bit. So we're going to talk about basic model for making things shiny called Fong illumination. And so now we have to consider the effect of an eye. So here I've chosen a little eye picture that I'll use <laughs> um, from Creative Commons. So let's put a little eye in the scene. And the reason I need that is because notice how things change a little bit depending on where I'm looking from. See that? That shininess is not always in the same place of the ellipsoid, right? It changes based on where, where I'm looking. So that's going to factor into the geometry somehow. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to set up a vector that points in the direction of the eye. I'll call this vector H. Because um, why not? Let's call it H. So let me get that arrow going there. Okay, so that's my vector h. So I'm going to make it a unit vector. So h is a unit vector in the direction from my intersection, so my position on the material, to the eye. Okay. Um, now, okay, now if this is kind of a mirror material, what we can say is that the perfect angle in and angle out will give me the strongest amount of light that gets reflected back. So this direction here, if my eye happens to coincide with this direction, then I'm going to get as much light as could possibly be, be shining, reflecting here. Um, and the further I am away from being at that angle, the less light I'm going to get. So let me call the angle between, so I'll call this here, um, h sub n, or no, sorry, I'll call it dh. Okay, so dh is the reflected direction here. So, so here's the direction to the light. This is reflected about the normal. So this is an angle of a here. And this is also an angle of a. So perfect angle in, angle out. But if I happen to not actually be coinciding with that perfectly, I'm going to fall off. And let's say that this angle is B. And so we'll, we'll just, you know, okay, so let's assume that DH is a unit vector and H is a unit vector. So what we'll do is we'll just fall off as the cosine of this angle again. And so again, since these are unit vectors, that's just going to be H dot DH. So that's the cosine of the angle B. So if B is zero, so if I'm perfectly incident with this direction, so if H and DH coincide, then the cosine of zero is gonna be one. So, that, so I'm gonna say I, I get all the specular light. So we call this specular as well. Let me write that down. So we'll say fond illumination, but also specular and shiny illumination. So if I coincide with the perfect angle out, then I get all the specular light. Otherwise, I fall off as a cosine. So if I want to incorporate that into a final equation, then it'll look like this. So here is Fong shading. Um, or sorry, Fong illumination. Fong shading is something a bit different. Okay, so Fong illumination. So we have our ambient term. We have our diffuse term. And now we also have our specular term. 
And so the specular term has its own coefficient, which says, how much of the light am I going to reflect as a mirror? I could have a mirror that just is a red mirror. It only reflects red light. Same as I could have a material that's diffuse that only reflects the red component. Um, so I got that, and then I'm gonna scale that down by the dot product of the direction to my eye and the reflected direction of the light. Um, you notice there's a little sneaky term here, this S. So there's this little exponent that you can put after the dot product. And that is to make it even shinier. So let's explore that here. So let's say that I want to make, oops, I keep clicking back in here. Let's say that I want to make Homer even shinier here. So what I'll do is I'll go to, and bring this over so you can see it. If I go to the yellow material and I change K, okay, so KS is pure yellow. Um, but if I, there's this coefficient S, I called it shininess here. Look what happens as I make that larger. See how the light gets more focused? Um, whereas if I make that smaller, okay, now it's kind of, so actually, I mean, I know it looks shinier, but what I mean is, is actually focused. So as this gets larger, these points of reflection get smaller. Because what it says, as this exponent gets larger, you have to be closer to the perfect angle in order to get a significant amount of reflection. So since the cosine of theta is less than one, if you're not incident here, um, raising something less than one to a power makes it even smaller. So the larger this power is, the more it falls off. So that's the shininess part. Okay, so now I want you to try to implement this um, in here. So I've given you some code to start with, just like before. Um, and what you have to do is figure out the reflection. Um, and then figure out the, the vector to the eye. And you have to do the same thing also where you clamp it at zero. So if this dot product ends up being less than zero, you don't want to keep it negative. You wanna clamp it at zero before you raise it to a power. So that's what you gotta to do to get the shininess going. So see if you can give that a shot. And that'll be it for this module. We'll do something in class with this um, that'll take it a little further, but, but this is the basics of following illumination.